ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Welcome into this Friday, October 6th edition. Your drive, it begins right now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. We're going to get your text in this hour. We do that every day. 304-396-TALK. That's 304-396-8255. A little bit later on, we're going to hear from Dickie Martin. Ashland in action tonight locally with a big-time matchup. It's at Boyd County. And that's going to be on our sister station, Cat Sports 93.3 and 1340. That's going to be a huge one. That's a huge rivalry every year. Throw out the records. None of that stuff matters. It's Ashland at Boyd County. We'll get an update on Huntington High and Woodrow Wilson a little bit later on in the program as well. Woody Woodrum's going to join us tonight to tell us more about that. We've got the video stream on all of our Kindred Communications Facebook pages and websites. And, of course, you want to lock in on WRVC.com. That's where we've got the video posted as well. So, busy night in high school football. We're going to get into all of that later on. Cabell Midland also taking on Musselman tonight, 7 o'clock on our sister station, 97.9 The River. Video stream also on our Kindred Communications Facebook pages and website. So we've got you covered with all of the action. And then after all the games, don't forget, we are your exclusive home in the area for high school game night. So we'll have all the scores across West Virginia coming up tonight starting Depending on when the Huntington High Fit game finishes, anywhere from 9.30 to after. So we'll start the show a little bit later, depending on the conclusion of the Huntington High game. So that's coming up later on. Big night last night for Marshall Soccer. The women were trying to get 2,000 fans to watch the herd in person take on Old Dominion. And... Old Dominion got the victory. It was in the 84th minute. It was 30 yards out. Game was pretty even, but a a strike, 30 yards out, the difference. And Old Dominion beats Marshall. The women fall 2-1 to one at Hoops Family Field. 1,139 fans showed up to see the women play. The goal was 2,000, so we're going to have to try this again. Ultimately, Marshall would like to break the attendance record for the women. 2,000 fans. Maybe we can get that done the next time that the women are in action. They are on the road to face Appalachian State on Sunday. Then they will have a couple more opportunities for you to go Hopefully, try to break that record. That would be a real nice ender for the season for them at home, if you could get that record broken. So, better luck next time there. But uh, for the fans that were there, they got a pretty good game. Marshall now 6-5-1. and one. The Old Dominion Monarchs are 9-1-2. and two. And, of course, men's soccer as well. The Thundering Herd. Continuing to stay undefeated. Number one team in the country. Looking to extend a 10-game winning streak. They will continue Sunbelt play coming up. They are, get this, get this. They are the last team in the country with a perfect winning percentage They have no ties or losses in the team's first 10 matches of the season. That is insane. So Georgia State taking on number one Marshall. That is going to be at Hoops Family Field tomorrow. That would be a great way to spend your evening. If you're not traveling to go see the herd take on NC State in football, that would be a good way to spend your evening going supporting the herd and see maybe more history being made. So they're having a pretty great season. I mean, not good isn't a good enough adjective. It, it Great is the way to describe this. Could they go undefeated all the way to conference play, to the tournament? Could they get to the tournament undefeated? Are they 
they pretty much, I don't see how they don't get an at-large. I would think that is already solidified, that they're getting an at-large. They have to. They've got some tough matches still to go, but I would think they're getting an at-large. I don't think they care for an at-large. They want the conference regular season championship. They want the tournament championship. They want the automatic bid. They probably want to host a few games as well. So if you're the number one team, you get the privilege and the honor of hosting, right? I think that's the goal right now for Chris Grassy's squad. So the Thundering Herd looking to continue their winning ways. Thursday night football last night here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Uh, it was kind of bittersweet. The Bears beat the Commanders 40-20, to and it ends a 14-game losing streak for Chicago. So that's the good news. The bad news is Chicago Bears legend and NFL Hall of Famer Dick Butkus passing away. Age of 80. He had gotten on social media as of late. He was on X, formerly Twitter, and he was kind of comical. It's like it's like stars from yesteryear discovering social media and finding out that there's an audience still that remembers them or has heard of them and has done their homework and looked him up and found out, hey, this guy was pretty great back in his day. He's pretty great now. I think the Iron Sheik was an example of that. Before he passed away, he had a hilarious Twitter account. I miss, I mean, now a lot of it was his people, but you know there was a lot of him in, injected into that. And Dick Butkus was was fun to follow as well. So he passes away at eighty. You know, he was he was one of those NFL football players that transcended the National Football League after his career. He wasn't just hey, you're a great football player. It's no, he was someone that. You talked about and you knew about after his career. He might have become more famous after his playing days because he was everywhere at one point as far as just being in you know, top of mind. What did you know him for? Well, you knew him for being a heck of a football player. Well, what else did you know him for? Well... He was tough as nails. He was personable. He was charismatic. He was what was considered to be the gold standard. This was from USA Today, the gold standard by which other middle linebackers are measured. And he was in a lot of film and television. He was in the longest yard, not the Adam Sandler version, but he was in the longest yard. That's one of my favorite movies, the the original. He was in a movie called Cry Onion. He was in, you got to go back a ways for this one. He was in a movie called Mother Jugs and Speed. If you haven't seen that one, if you're younger, you might check that one out. Definitely watch the original Longest Yard if you're younger. Mother Jugs and Speed, probably a good one there. He was also in a movie called Gus, Superdome, a movie called Cracking Up. He was in a comedy, Johnny Dangerously, Michael Keaton film. I remember that one. He was in Hamburger, the motion picture. He was in The Stepford Children, a movie called Spontaneous Combustion. Uh, and here's one that you might remember, Gremlins 2, The New Batch. A little bit closer to current times, he was in a a really fun movie called Necessary Roughness, uh, and I thought a really great movie, Any Given Sunday. But if you were a TV fan, you might have known him for his roles in Blue Thunder. That was a popular TV show for a moment. My Two Dads, that was definitely a popular comedy back in the day. MacGyver. Who doesn't love MacGyver? He was also on Murder, She Wrote. And I think a lot of people maybe knew him better for his portrayal. He he played himself in the the TV movie Brian's Song. I don't know if that's readily available, 
But if you haven't seen it, you should. It's an excellent sports movie. It's an excellent movie. It's a television movie, but it's an excellent film. And it's if you're a sports fan, you definitely need to look up Brian's song. I know it came out in the 70s, but that's definitely a film that you should you should look at. Of course, he was in a lot of commercials and a lot of other sports programming as well. So I think he transcended just being a football player. And of course, you know him probably from the Buckus Award. That came about in 1985. That's an award that football players want to win. And there's some other things that he's done as well for uh, a lot of causes. So Dick Butkus passing away Thursday on the age of 80. And then the Chicago Bears come out and drop 40 on the Washington Commanders. So I thought that was fitting as we lost a legend. When we continue, we're going to get you kicked off. Marshall taking on NC State. That's coming up on Saturday. We'll kick the game off for you when we continue. Later on, we'll talk high school football. We'll hear from Dickie Martin. Ashland's taking on Boyd County. Also, Huntington High will play host of Woodrow Wilson. Woody Woodrow will give us an update on that game. All of that still to come on today's edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Hey, Tri-State, Frank's Place is where friends hang out with friends. Stop on by for happy hour from 4 to 6 p.m. and a lot of daily specials. If you were a sports fan, we have what you need from the Sunday ticket for the NFL, college football, Major League playoffs, and more. Listen up, Tri-State. If you are a first responder, stop by Frank's Place and check out the specials we have just for you. Frank's Place, located at the River Place Plaza next to Fratelli's. Check us out on Facebook for weekly updates and specials. Frank's Place, your home away from home. Stalwart Insurance is the name for insurance in the tri-state. They are committed to delivering tailored benefit solutions with thoughtful, strategic planning with valuable professional services. Stop by or call Stalwart Insurance for your homeowner's insurance needs. Stalwart Insurance is located right beside Kenny Queen Hardware on Route 10 in Barbersville. Call Stalwart Insurance anytime at 304-552-3883. That's 304-552-3883. Or visit them online at stalwartinsurance.com. Imagine this. It's a chilly winter morning. It snowed a little overnight. You think to yourself, is my car ready for this? There are multiple steps you could take to see if your car is ready for winter. Or one simple one. Have the pros at TikTok Tire make sure your car is ready for winter. They'll check your battery, tires, fluids, wipers, and hoses. Don't get caught out in the cold this winter. Give the pros at TikTok Tire a call and they'll be happy to answer any questions. Winterize your car at TikTok Tire. 2102 3rd Avenue, Huntington. Call today for your appointment at 304 525 31. Now at Menard, save big money on your next project with 11% off everything. Give any room a fresh look with Mohawk Flooring. Mohawk Tile includes ceramic, porcelain, and mosaic glass tiles to fit any decor. Clean Protect Point Park Collection floor and wall tiles protect against bacteria. Just $159 each after 11% rebate. Get 11% off everything now at Menards. Good through October 8th. Savings are mail-in rebate. Some exclusions apply. See store for details. Save big money at Menards. Okay, what's worse than your air conditioner going down in the middle of the summer? I'll tell you, your air conditioner going down and then being told it can't be fixed. Well, stop getting sold and start getting serviced at General Heating and Air Conditioning. We pride ourselves on fixing your heating and cooling equipment, keeping you and your family comfortable while saving you money. It's been our tradition since 1968. Call us today for your cooling needs, 606-836-8143. General Heating and Air, the tri-state tradition. My dad came to live with us last month, and you know, it's going pretty well. I feel like I never have time for myself. With him being around more, it really lets us catch up on things. His memory isn't what it used to be. We get up and we have coffee. He usually wakes up at 4.30. Then we go for a walk. He needs lots of my attention. I do need to keep an eye on his medications, though. That's important. Sometimes I feel like a pharmacist. I'd say John and the kids are adjusting pretty well. They honestly have no idea what I'm going through. It can be a little challenging. Help. But so far, so good. I could really use just a little help. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers for advice, tips, and support. Together, let's help each other better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. I want to thank my mommy for loving me so much, for taking me out to the park, for reading me books, 
for taking me to the doctor when I broke my foot in ballet rehearsal. For leaving me alone when I wanted to be alone. And now, as a grown-up, I'm thankful for being able to take care of you, my dear mom. For having the chance to take you to the park. For reading you those books we enjoy so much. For being able to take you to your therapies after you twisted your ankle. For understanding that sometimes you simply want to be alone. Roles change without us noticing. And in your new role, we help you help. Visit aarp.org caregiving to get practical health and wellness tips to provide even better care for your loved one. Remember, visit aarp.org caregiving. AARP, we help you help. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to your Friday edition, The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Our text line this hour is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. We're getting set for high school football on this Friday night. Tomorrow, Marshall at NC State, 11 o'clock is your airtime on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. As the herd getting set for the Wolfpack. You got to get set as well. So, how are you going to watch the game? Well, it's on the CW. This is one of those nationally televised games on the CW. Not everybody has the CW. So, if you're looking for a place to watch the game, you can visit us at Giovanni's 20th Street. That's where we're going to be for tomorrow's edition of College Football Today. So, if you're looking for a place to catch the game, Giovanni's 20th Street will be the place to go to the game. Of course, you can always listen to it right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So the game is going to be a challenge, according to Coach Huff. Marshall's just not going to show up and win the game. Got to go play the game. It's going to be a challenge. Probably the best team on film, according to Coach Huff. He, He went through it all. And it's time to kind of get you set for tomorrow's game. We do this every week. It's called the kickoff. Ladies and gentlemen, will you take your seats, please? Here we go. There's the kickoff. The Marshall Thundering Herd have been living on the edge all season long. Last week, the Herd rallied from a 21-3 deficit against ODU to keep its streak alive, scoring 28 straight points and getting a career effort from quarterback Cam Fancher to earn a 41-35 win over the Monarchs for his first Sun Belt win of the year. Sure, the Herd has a perfect 4-0 record heading into his contest with 3-2 NC State, but the team has had to come back from every game this season that won't get the job done on the road against the Wolfpack. This is not, you know, hey, here come the herd and, and you just stack on another another win. We are going to have to play really well. We're going to have to eliminate a lot of the Marshall beaters that have been showing up you know, in our games. Uh, we cannot go down and spot this team 18 points. We cannot do that. We cannot go down and turn the ball over. We cannot go down and miss tackles. Uh, We're going to have to play really, really well. Marshall linebacker Eli Neal might sound like a broken record, but he knows it's important that the team comes out to a fast start. I hate to keep giving y'all the same answer, but I mean, it's it's, it's the honest to God truth. Starting fast is important each and every week. That's that's like our mission going into any game. Nobody wants to go down 18. But um, after those kind of things happen, it's just about how you respond to it. The fast start will be crucial because NC State does not give up a lot of points. It's because of a smothering defense that will be on Marshall as soon as the team gets off the bus. Defensively, I don't know if they're going to let us off the bus. So we're going to have to get to the stadium before them. Um, because they may blitz the bus driver, um, and, and they're they're good. Um, they do not give up a lot of rush yards. They do not give up a lot of points. Marshall left guard Trent Holler says the Wolfpack prides itself on stopping the run. Yeah, they uh, they want to stop the run. Um, and I mean, they have done it. Their defense, uh, you know, the three guys on their uh, defensive line, you know, they're really good. The linebackers are great. Uh, the secondary is good. So. I mean, they pride themselves on stopping the ball, and uh, you know that's kind of what they got going for them right now. Coach Huff sees a defense that plays with a lot of passion, led by linebacker Peyton Wilson, who was the ACC linebacker of the week earlier this year, 
and is a Butkus Award candidate given to the nation's top linebacker. Wilson has 56 tackles in five games this season and wreaks havoc in the backfield as a disruptive force in the Blitz heavy package. They play with a lot of passion and energy. They fly around. They've got really good players. Number 11, Peyton Wilson, probably one of the better players that I've seen on film in a long time. Uh, he does a lot of really good for them. Uh, plays with the right attitude, plays with the right energy. Um, he is a ACC version of the kid we just played at ODU, um, Henderson, uh, who had a phenomenal day against us as well. Marshall center Logan Osborne knows he will have his hands full with a player who is the NC State version of Marshall defensive lineman Owen Porter. Number one, he's, he's Owen Porter-ish. Um, yeah, he, he gives phenomenal effort. I'm, I'm not seeing a player like him. He's... He's similar to uh, 42 last week, the linebacker, of just how much effort he gives. Um, number one, uh, their field uh, defense tackle, he's an NFL guy. Um, strong, physical, he has a wide a variety of moves and pass rush. Um, they got great players up front, and they got great players in the back end as well. On offense, Marshall is challenged with another new quarterback this week as sophomore quarterback M.J. Morris will take over as the starter the third of his career in place of transfer Brennan Armstrong for NC State. But according to Coach Huff, don't expect the Wolfpack to miss a beat. Um, they just made a change at quarterback. Um, you know, when you look at it from a they made a change standpoint, they're not going to change the entire system. Um, they're going to be able to do what they do, which is really good on offense. They just got um, Coach Anai in, so you can tell they're kind of in the first year, but they, their, their concept or the areas of field they're trying to attack um, stress you on defense. Um, and Morris is, is very capable of running, throwing, um, creating a lot of problems for, for, for defenses and us. For Marshall linebacker Keyshawn Brown, it's just another game with another quarterback that likes to run. So that's where the focus will be. A lot of quarterback run, um, and, and that's been one thing that uh, we have not been our best at. So uh, I think that's one thing that, that we're really going to key in on this week. And, uh, and they like to run the ball, too. Uh, they have a very good O line. Um, that's one thing, you know, we're not looking over. They have a great O line. So, uh, you know, we just got to key in on, uh, on the things that we need to do this week and uh, stop the run. Uh, fun. Marshall defensive lineman Owen Porter is all too aware that the Marshall defense has struggled with running quarterbacks. We have had a obvious struggle with quarterback run here in the last year. I think our biggest thing is just tackling missed assignments. They're just. They're killing us, right? So on six plays, that kid ran the ball on Saturday. He was like negative on five of them, and then the one was 60 yards. So it's not because that kid's, you know, a great runner or anything like that. It's that we mess up. Somebody misses a tackle. Somebody hasn't missed a sign, but they're not where they're supposed to be. And then the gap is our defense. So. Marshall defensive back J.J. Roberts explains why it's so difficult to deal with a running quarterback. Well, I mean, like adding the quarterback into the run game is adding an extra blocker, essentially. So, I mean, any quarterback run scheme is hard to go up against just because of the amount of people that he has blocking for him, you know. But, um, I mean, it definitely makes it a little bit more difficult. But um, we have a, a good game plan in right now, so... Coach Huff thinks the quarterback gets too much attention. It does not matter who the quarterback is. It's about what Marshall does. It does not matter, you know, who they put in where. Uh, we've got a lot of things that we've got to get cleaned up. We've been kind of, I said it after the game, we've been living on a prayer. You can't turn the ball over three times and expect to get three turnovers and make it zero and have ten penalties and they had nine. And you're right on the edge. Um, so we've got a lot of things that we got to clean up. I think having a little bit of a library from last year helps. And I think just kind of understanding the system's going to be similar. Maybe not exactly the same. Maybe, you know, maybe Morris likes certain pass plays that the other kid didn't. But um, you're not getting where they were and then they're going to triple option. You know? So you can kind of base your game plan based on the system rather than the person. That's the look at tomorrow's game. We'll have it for you at 11 a.m. We'll get things started with West Virginia and Appalachian Laborers District Council College Football today, presented by Lyona, your workforce solution, WVLDC.org. When we continue, we'll hear from Woody Woodrum, get you updated on Huntington High, taking on Woodrow Wilson. That's coming up tonight here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Also, later on the program, Dickie Martin will give us a preview of the rivalry game between Ashland and 
and Boyd County. That's all on this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Coming up tonight here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930, it'll be Huntington High playing host of Woodrow Wilson. We'll have that video stream on all of our Kindred Communications Facebook pages and websites. Just go to WRBC.com. That's all you need to do. Just go to that one. You can watch the game or you can listen to it right here. Uh, The thing is, we just don't know when the game's going to begin. Woody Woodrum's going to give us an update on what's happening. So according to sources, Woody... The bus yeah. left at 4 o'clock. They might be here maybe a little bit after the scheduled kickoff time. We're talking, of course, about Woodrow Wilson. They might be here. They might not. The game's going to get played eventually, but we just don't know when. Well, that's exactly right, Paul. And the thing is, we don't know what kind of traffic they're going to encounter, especially at the mall here in the Barsville area, uh, as well as the uh, uh, Yes, the Charleston State House crowd that starts coming out about <laughs> five o'clock. They're going to run right smack into that traffic. So, uh, you know, hopefully they're safe. There, there appears to be a shortage in Raleigh County or something uh, along their lines of buses and drivers both. And so they didn't get the first bus after they'd run their route back there to take the varsity program and the coaches. They came down on the first bus, left a little bit after 4 o'clock. And then uh, about 4.40, they got a second bus there. They packed the JV and, and who's ever in on that. And I don't know if they're waiting on a third bus for the band, something along those lines or what. But you've also got to give them some time once they get here to, you know, saddle up. And you got to throw on the shoulder pads and probably do some last-minute taping and whatnot. So. They're going to try to start. If they come through unscathed out on I-64, then we might still start, according to Bruce Sr., the athletic director here at Huntington, we'd like to start at 730. But, you know, if they get hell up for any reason, we might be looking more like 745 or 8 o'clock. Let me tell you this. They will play this game unless it's one of those situations where they just close down 64 and reroute all the traffic, uh, that's the only thing that might change all this. So we'll see how that goes. But it should be a pretty good game if Beckley's able to get here. So I'm sure Coach Seals has already been on the phone with Coach Huff trying to pull out that ECU game plan because the herd had that long delay, and you know, Coach outlined what they needed to do. They were going to have snacks ready. They had this sort of game plan for high school kids – They're getting ready. They're gathering after school, obviously. It's not the same structure as a college football team, but it is similar, and delays do impact both teams. Absolutely. He hasn't really made a big deal of this. In fact, I don't think he's really told the players, although some of the parents certainly have found out. But, you know, last night when they were talking, they were like, well, if they don't get a bus till 5, that puts them in 7, so we'd probably be at least 8 o'clock. And so, like I say, it's up in the air. They they fed the kids as they normally do at four o'clock, and uh, you know, and and it, there was certainly some barbecue left over, uh, you know, macaroni and cheese stuff like that, cookies and and so forth. So uh, they all got a pretty good meal in their stomach as they do, and uh, it, the mother's coming serve that it's really something we should talk more about because it's really fantastic way that program really provides for those kids and all the businesses that donate and and give food to the program you know cordoba today was uh was who provided their meals so but uh you know billy's more worried about a five and one beckley team that's playing pretty darn good right now uh they won their first two games against riverside and greenbrier east which is Greenbrier East in Princeton and Oak Hill are in a conference, the Oak Coldfield Conference, with Beckley, Woodrow Wilson. So uh, then they hit their speed bump when they played Parkersburg South, who is pretty good, uh, was the runner-up last year to Huntington. 
as you'll remember, and they lost to them 56-20. But it bounced back with a comeback win against Bluefield, one of the top double-A teams, and that was at Bluefield, and somehow Beckley pulled it out 28-27. Then they beat Lincoln County 49-21, and they beat Preston last week on the road 50-13. to So, you know, none of those teams outside of Parkersburg South and Bluefield are really thinking about postseason coming up. And so you, you you don't know how good a team is until you see it against a good team. So uh, I know there was tape of Parkersburg South, which I watched some of, and they're good, just like they were last year, kind of like Huntington is and so forth. So uh, that's, that's an interesting look at it. And uh, last week, Preston just, you know, was overwhelmed. It was 50-13. to 13. They certainly could have ran it up more if they'd wanted to. One of the big things that happened last week, though, was Elijah Redfern came back. He passed out on the sideline, collapsed, late in the Beckley game, and was taken to the hospital. Was, you know, was there for a short while and then released. He missed the next game uh, against Lincoln County, but he came back for the Preston game. And he came back and played pretty well, three catches, 29 yards, 12-yard touchdown. And on the year, he's been their guy to go to. He is their uh, Wayne Harris, if you will, because he's caught uh, 16 passes, 294 yards, 18 and a half yards carry, and five touchdowns. So he is a little injured, makes it go. And uh, they've got some good, nice backs. Uh, Elijah Waller has five touchdowns this year, has rushed for nearly 300 yards. Uh, Landon Jones had a seven yard touchdown against Preston. He's got 241 yards this year, four touchdowns. And Jacob Reeves is a junior who hadn't played that much to a Preston game. He got a six yard touchdown on four rushes for 60 yards and has about 127 yards on four carries. They've got six guys, Paul, that have rushed for 127 yards or more. And they've also got eight guys who uh, have scored touchdowns. So, they do spread it around, although to say that the, their offense is a little bit different from most of the teams you see, it's it's more akin to football maybe 100 years ago or rugby because they, they, they have such tight splits between their linemen where most people have, you know, a half a yard to a yard gap between the feet of the two linemen, but they have one foot right on top of the other. They like to pull their left guard, left tackle kind of wall teams off and get the back cut up inside where the blockers are trying to sweep out that remain. They try to sweep the nose and the middle linebacker and those folks out of the way and create a crease that I guarantee you uh, Bear Bryant or uh, Papa Bear Hollis, uh, the Bears, uh, Vince Lombardi, all those guys would be very familiar with that style of football. You were there 100 years ago, right? You were there. You saw that in action. Absolutely, you know, and uh, – it, it is. We ran a lot of plays like they run at Winfield. And we had belly four reverse at seven where you fake the dive up the middle and then you pitch to the outside. It was a pretty effective uh, play call for the Generals while I was there. Managed to go 22 and eight on my three years there. So uh, Of course they did. Good. Of course they did. Of course they were good when you <laughs> were there. And not, not so much now, but when you were there, it was all no, good. No, no, they're still really good but, in they, but they were they, they really can't play good. Hurricane. But were they <laughs> as good as they were when you were there? That's the question. No, they're much better than when I was there, although I was part of the 41-game win streak that they had in the regular season. There, see, we it went, comes out. It comes out. Yeah. There it is. I know my sophomore year, but my brother, Bob, uh, he went to the playoffs, got beat by Buffalo Wayne, and then my brother, Jim, went to the playoffs as well and uh, a couple of times. But my youngest brother, Bill, he was there for their greatest run. They were state champs in 85, lost to Bridgeport four overtimes in the semifinals in 86 and then won again in 87. So two championships in three years there. And of the five championships Winfield has won, uh, Bill's years were the best of all. So, uh, And he brought some of that winning ways with him to the herd the next year in 88 when I came back as equipment guy, and my brother Jim was helping us out. Is so, that going to be in your book, The Four Woodrums? Uh, book stands I, I think 2024? it should be, you know, or, or – 
uh, four bison, <laughs> four something like bisons. that. Four bison. <laughs> Woody Woodrum is with us. I've got to. I got to let you go because Dicky Martin's coming up next, and you know we we got to spend a few minutes with him. So uh, he's got a big one tonight. Yeah, yeah, he does. Sure. Ashland yeah, he does. Boyd County, big rivalry game on our sister station, Cat Sports ninety three three and thirteen forty. But uh, watch we'll out, be... Dicky. I say go Tomcats. I'll tell him that's Woody Woodrum. His book coming out here, The Four Woodrums. That'll be the title of it coming out real soon. More coming up on this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Friday edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Ashland at Boyd County tonight on our sister station, Cat Sports 93.3 and 1340. Always a big-time contest when Ashland and Boyd County meet. Dickie Martin's with us now, the longtime voice of the Ashland Tomcats. Um, Ashland and Boyd County, two places, that, uh, two schools that just don't like each mm-hmm. other. Is that fair? Uh, I think that's a fair assessment, yes. So this is, uh, this then, is the rivalry. It's not, a real, it's not a real hate like it used to be, but they don't like each other. Well, they should listen to your broadcast tonight. That would stoke the fires and then, immediately. Uh, and, you know, uh, they probably will, and by the time it's over, they'll hate me. So, get in line. Dickie Martin's with us. Oh, very lovable human being. It's um, <laughs> There you go. So hey, how- I wanna, can, let me ask you a question before you start with your question. Yeah, go ahead. Ask your question. I used to, I used to, I used to be first on your show, and now I'm last. So, am I, am I, what, what, do I drop down the, Ladder, or do I suck, or what? Well, I could answer those questions on air, but I don't have enough time to really break that down. <laughs> okay. You no, mean. we're saving the best for it's your, last. It's your, it's, your, it's your show. You can, you know, we can do whatever. If you want to be first next week, you'll be first next week. How's that? Well, we don't have a game next week. That's why you'll be first. <laughs> You're funny. I like that. I appreciate it. Big okay. matchup tonight. How, um... How's this one going to shake out? Do uh, you throw records out of the books here? I mean, just, just does that oh, no. matter? I or think, uh, well, I think you could years and years ago, but uh, no, I don't think so now. Ashland is is a better of the two football teams. I don't think anybody will question that. But you know, if they played nine out of ten, Boyd County might win one of those or maybe two, and this might be one of those nights. You just never know, but. I don't think they can handle all the weapons the Tomcats have. Boyd County's defense is not very good. They're giving up 37, 38 points a game, and Ashland's averaging almost 48. So, you know, it's going to be hard to keep Ashland out of the end zone. How much better has this Tomcat team gotten from that first game against Raceland to now? No, very much. I don't know if it's 10 times or even five times, but they're, they're awfully good, and they got a lot of weapons, and, and we may have a little surprise up our sleeve tonight. Uh, so you just never know. Go ahead. Share the surprise. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Strader practiced all week, so he may be back. Tonight. Okay. So that's a big deal for the Tomcats. It's a big deal. But, of course, Brandon Houston's done just a marvelous job over the last three weeks. I mean, he's led us big victories, and he's a great, great athlete. Best athlete we got. But then – we had another weapon because Strader was a weapon, not only throwing but running. And then now you got Houston back in his wide receiver spot, and uh, you got too many weapons to guard. You just don't have, you know, most high schools don't have enough uh, defensive players that can guard those type type of people. Dickie Martin's with us, the Ashland Tomcats in action tonight, taking on Boyd County. It's on our sister station, Cat Sports, in 93-3 and 13-40. It's a huge rivalry matchup, maybe yep. not the biggest rivalry of the year, just because where these two teams are. But as, um, as you pointed out, it seems like every week you can make an argument for most of the teams that it's a rivalry game for the Tomcats, only because the Tomcats have been so successful. Exactly. They have been so successful, not only in football, but in basketball, and they always wear a big target on their back. And So we're everybody's rival, and that's okay. We accept it. Go on. We win. We win. If we lose, huh, we'll tee it up next week and see what, see what goes. But, uh, you know, Boyd County's got a pretty good football team. They, I think they showed that last week. They put nearly 50 points up against Greenup, 
but they, you know, I don't think they ca- have the depth or the offensive weapons that the uh, Tomcats have. You know what this means? No running clock for you. You're a big fan of the running clock. That's not happening. <laughs> well, I can't help it. I mean, the last, what, three weeks we've had running clocks? Just the way it is. I do you mean, have to be somewhere on Friday people. night? Where do you have to be Friday no, night? No, I know. No, Well, of course, I have to be with you on Friday night. That's fair. But after the game, I are mean, you in a hurry for something? Let the game go. No, no, no. Well, I always like to get home and watch uh, Keith Morehouse and uh, Dick Tracy or whatever you think. Uh, that would be Jim <laughs> Tracy, not Dick Tracy, yeah, I Jimmy I, I said, Tracy. I, said, I know I say that out facetiously. You know, a lot of people don't even know who most, Dick most Tracy of our is. Listeners yeah. don't even know who Dick Tracy is. No, they don't know. I mean, I know because I, you know, I associate with old people like you. Uh, there you go. My friend Dickie Martin is with us here yeah. on the program. You know, I'll be one of those old people soon. So I, 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 yeah, exactly I, I right. trust me. I'll be, I'll it. be happily one of those old people like you. But uh, uh, that's right. We we kid, but the game tonight. And if you have never listened to Dickie Martin call a game tonight, it's always an experience. You can listen to it on our sister station, Cat Sports ninety three three and thirteen forty. As the and top. Bill Cornwell is going to be with me tonight. How about that? Well, that just dropped the uh, that, that just dro- that just dropped the uh, the excitement level <laughs> a little bit here. Uh, I don't know about that. So what's, maybe I'll have you come down one Friday night and I, do a game. What I could think? I could do that. Uh, I I trust trust. I'll be probably be more entertaining than Bill. <laughs> I'll tell him you said that. I'll tell him I said that. Please tell him. No, uh, Billy would be fun tonight. Uh, Billy needs a game. Yeah, Somebody needs to supervise yeah. him on a Friday night. It might as well be. Exactly, exactly. So he didn't have a Spring Valley game, so he wants to go watch the Tomcats. Right. So there you are. There you go. So he's uh, you're, you've you got him for the night. And it fit, it fit in perfectly because Charlie Chatfield, my normal color guy, he's been under the weather this week. He's got bronchitis and all that kind of stuff. So he couldn't be out in his night air. So uh, it worked out well. Have fun with Mr. Cornwell tonight. He'll uh, hey, we'll have a ball tonight. He'll be a treat for you have, and the have listeners. If the Tomcats win, we'll even have a bigger time. What if the Tomcats lose? Will he ever be welcome back? Uh, he will not be welcome back if we lose tonight. I can tell you that. <laughs> okay, so he'll that's... Have to, he'll have to pay his way in. <laughs> so he'll never be back. <laughs> there you go. Always entertaining. That's the whole point of this. It's always entertaining. That's exactly right. That's why we do this we last. A, we are in a we are in an entertainment uh, venue. That's, that's why us. we that's why we do this last because yeah, you know, at this point of the of the show, we're just mostly having fun talking a little bit about the football game, and and just really that's the that's the segment us having fun. There you go. Have fun I'm with tonight, you, brother. Have fun tonight. It'll be a fun one to well, listen thanks. to. Thanks. It's always a pleasure to be on your show and. Uh, I'll, I'll come on next Friday, and we'll just talk shop. Okay. You know what? That? We'll do that. You're welcome to come on next week. You you can even come okay. in the studio if you like. <laughs> well, I, mean, I just may surprise you, by God. What do right. you think of that? Let's do it. Ashland Boyd County tonight. Dickie Martin by himself next week with no <laughs> no game to talk about. He'll just talk about everyone else's game. We'll talk about everybody else. Okay. you got to do your homework, though. Okay. Deal. All right. Dickie Martin, catch the game tonight. Ashland Boyd County on Cat Sports 93.3. And 1340. That's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for tuning in. Huntington High and Beckley Woodrow Wilson coming up tonight here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Keep your ear to the radio because we might have to go on a little bit later than usual just because of transportation issues and congestion on I-64. Beckley Woodrow Wilson getting a late start coming to Huntington. So we'll have an updated time. Be listening to the radio. Just keep it locked right here. On ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. That's going to do it for this edition. Don't forget tomorrow, Marshall football. We get it underway at 11 a.m. with West Virginia and Appalachian Laborers District Council College Football today. Presented by Lyona, your workforce solution, WVLDC.org. We'll be at Giovanni's 20th Street. Should be a fun one. Have a great night, everyone. Retransmitting in Glorious FM on 94.1 W227BS Huntington. This is 930 WRVC Huntington, celebrating 100 years of broadcasting.